into the world. So if you look in that sense, the scape uh, HPC as an industry is about a $60 billion industry. But on the world market, that only represents 10% of the world. So 90% is underrepresented. So I can now bring this. This is like the equivalent of going into the Amazon forest the first time with this vehicle and showing uh, tribes like, look, look what we have, we have a car. And so in that sense, um, I have a lot of passion, especially around STEM and uh, uh, bringing this kind of technology to environments as an educational resource as well. I can go into K through 12 and now teach supercomputer systems to students and make this a tool set that's common to the virus. This is like us having laptops, supercomputer capabilities only available to the elite. You need to have hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, you need to have world-class environments. And we're saying we can do it anywhere with a plug. So um, the foundation we put together, we got four guys that will be exiting Sandia, and we're starting this company called Unify. Uh, my role will be president and founder. Um, I have a good colleague of mine that I see in my CEO role, and Connor and I are actually in the same art space with supercomputing systems. And my friend Sean over here is going to be, he has a huge background in business and finance. So we kind of have all the different elements. So we're, uh, we're geared up to look at uh, a couple of different portfolios in academia, K 12, community colleges, universities. What's in our own backyard in New Mexico? We have Mexico Tech, we got CNM, we got UNM, we got the school systems. And a lot of other markets, including the government space too. Uh, so I have that space I'm looking into uh, looking at the intelligence community. So I wear hats. My thing has actually gone on to work for some very cool sponsors. I fly up to the East Coast sometimes to go to things where they ask for my tech. Um, so they, they've been provided a whole portfolio of feedback uh, to motivate the things we're doing right now as well. My passion is motorsports. I have a super that I race. Um, so I've been doing uh, rally and hill climb for the last 20 years. So I've done the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb five times now. So I, I race a 700 horsepower super as fast as I possibly can up a mountain. Right? It's kind of like super computing. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. It just has wheels. So <laughs> we should be a lot of computer. There we go. <laughs> that's, that's great. No, important to get the the biographical details about your passion as a, as a person and as an individual. I feel like that usually, usually informs your professional decisions. Uh, so good to know. It's good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Take it one. Since you guys are all together. Might as well. I, I could not introduce myself better than Victor just introduced me. So <laughs> try. I'm John Dubneska, um, also at San Diego. We're we'll separate here very soon. Obviously, you heard what we're, we're working on, but my background, as Victor said, is business finance. Um, actually, I'm from Colorado, so University of Colorado Boulder for uh, accounting undergrad and MBA finance. Came work at San Diego. And so, the last six and a half years, I've been doing IT financial management. For our supercomputing and uh, the cybersecurity group. Yes. Um, I am here just out of curiosity. I've always been interested in angel investing and investors. Um, been an entrepreneurial spirit my entire my whole life. However, I think right now we're moving forward in maybe the first solid <laughs> entrepreneurial venture we've I've tried to attack. Uh, my husband and I are just kind of starting to smooth into the opening startup phases of a four by four conversion business mm -hmm. in these months. And um, along with that, one other one or two other items in the fire in Alaska and one or two here. So just always thinking of things and trying to figure out how to make everything happen. Not, not so fast, but big, tall, and far. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah, right there, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. You want to ask, uh, Elizabeth, would you like to unmute yourself and uh, introduce? Sure. Turn Elizabeth on your camera. Oh, whoops. Yep. Let me find that. Oh, there we go. Can't hear Hello. you. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Scary. Um, I, I have a partner. Not... And... Oh, Elizabeth, we can't hear you. Oh. Um, let's see. But we couldn't hear Laura either, so I don't know. Should I call in from my phone? Yeah, and, you can uh, try that. Maybe you can sound that way. They, they said they can hear us, but. Yeah, I can hear. The investments are all technical difficulties. 
Lisa, do you want to give us the uh, the two minutes on the uh, fat pipe while we're while I'm working on this? Yeah. So my name is Lisa Atkins. I'm the CEO of the Fat Pipe Co-working Network. We have four locations throughout the state. I also run uh, the Bioscience Center. It's an incubator for startups in biotech and life sciences, and I'm co-founder of a software development company called Ingenuity Software Labs. I'm supposed to be Johnny on the spot today, and apparently I'm failing. <laughs> Let's see. Can you maybe send me a Zoom link? Um, I think I have That'd be great. Thanks for Thank you. Let me try to switch. Um, yeah, I think it's in the, uh, it yeah. must be in the event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura or Elizabeth, could you try to say something again? Hello, this is Elizabeth. Nothing? Hey, I gotcha. You're on now. Oh, we can hear you. All right. Um, hello, I'm Elizabeth Scary. Uh, I have a partner, and we are starting, or we are going for a license for a cannabis testing lab um, here in New Mexico. And then uh, in parallel with that, we'll do hemp testing as well. Fantastic. Uh, cannabis being a tough market, obviously funding and uh, getting help with funding on that since you can't do traditional loans um, is, is something that we're very interested in. Thanks, Elizabeth. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Signate Media, would you like to unmute yourself and introduce? Hi, my name is Leah Messina. Um, Insinuate Media is my uh, digital marketing firm, and uh, I've been doing this about 15 years. So just listening in, curious, just, um, you know, we're looking, my husband and I, who run the firm, are looking at different opportunities uh, to invest in and expand to some other areas. Um, so just curious to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, fantastic. My partner, Laura, is on the line. Laura, would you like to introduce yourself? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. My name is Laura Jepson and I work for Fat Pipe New Mexico. I sit at our Rio Rancho site, which I am there right now. And I also manage our marketing and our events. So thank you for the rest of my team and to New Mexico Angels for helping us put this together today. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, thank you, Laura, for having us. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for coming out in, uh, in the East Mountains here. So I'll uh, give a few notes on NMA and then I'll turn it over to Dorian to talk more about kind of the, what we do uh, from a technical uh, point of view. Um, so really what we're doing with the Angels is a community building exercise. We're a matchmaking service between investors that are looking for startups, startups that are looking for investors. So we appreciate y'all coming out in person. I think it's important to uh, meet face to face, uh, form the relationships that eventually will turn into deals that you know that be profitable for everybody. Um, yeah, thanks again for Fat Bike for hosting us. Um, we're looking to build an environment where one plus one equals three, which is really what happens when uh, we get the right people in the room. In New Mexico, we have the talent, we have the drive, we have the capital. Uh, we can make these deals happen in state without having to go to you know, out-of-state out entities. We just really need to get people talking to each other and get disparate communities uh, that don't typically talk to each other talking, which at Sandia, I'm sure you understand kind of the, the different villages of New Mexico uh, that are speaking in different languages and uh, we're looking to build bridges and form connections that will help you know, uh, help people talk, help people connect and uh, build an environment where one plus one equals three. So, Mission in New Mexico Angels, uh, we're looking to um, invest in early stage companies um, that were, we identify as uh, early stage uh, bridge round funding. Typically, typical angel deal uh, is in the region of uh, two, three, eight hundred thousand uh, dollars although, you know, we do, we do different stage things. Um, and our focus is on New Mexico uh, specifically. Although we have, uh, you know, we are also interested in, in the region. So, and Dorian will tell you more about, about that. Uh, and we're really specifically look, looking at high growth companies, companies with potential for high growth, um, which is what our investors ultimately are looking for. 
So I'll let Dorian introduce herself, um, but here's are some of her credentials. I'm the new marketing and membership director at New Mexico Angels. I've, previous to this, I've worked in several startups uh, in the software uh, and entertainment space. I've also done political campaigns. I've also run an art gallery. I've, I've worn a lot of different hats doing a lot of different kinds of things. Um, but the common thread is entrepreneurship, and I've worked for and with entrepreneurs for my entire working career. So um, uh, coming on board with Drew and with the Angels has been kind of a natural fit for me and uh, kind of feeds my need for to operate in the creative space. Um, and I'll I say think what- you can hold that in your hand. I don't think it needs to be kind of uh, easy. Oh, nice. And then I'll say one more thing, because um, I, uh, I have a plug to make. Uh, we're launching a new program in the new year. This is our new Angel Club. Uh, this is a free educational opportunity uh, for anybody interested in Angel Investing. This is a weekly uh, after work hours uh, seminar that's online. We'll have an in-person component as well. Um, but we're going to do an eight-week course about what is Angel Investing, how to uh, read a term sheet, how to evaluate a deal. Um, at the conclusion of this course, there'll be an additional cohort for people who are uh, qualified and interested in actually making investments. And we'll walk you through the process of doing a due diligence process and actually investing in an angel deal. So if you know anybody who is uh, a, currently an investor who maybe needs a little bit of uh, education before making a, uh, taking the plunge into angel investment, we'd love to hear from them. Uh, this is my contact information on max at mexicanangels.com or nmangels.com. Um, so with that, I will uh, give the mic to Dorian. And uh, that's still me. Hmm? Okay, so uh, man, okay, so a few key stats on the angels. Um, we've invest, we've been around for twenty years. I might have mentioned this earlier. In that time frame, we've invested over twenty million dollars in New Mexico companies. Um, in I'll get drilled down into those details later on in the presentation. Um, but that's kind of the 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 pace at which we've been working. Uh, we're partnered with Rockies Venture Club. They are a similar organization in Colorado uh, that has uh, membership. We, we are able to share deals, share diligence, and uh, kind of expand our reach. And this is also a way that we can syndicate our deals into neighboring states um, once we've you know, done our own diligence. So they're, they're good friends of ours and um, uh, a valuable partner. Um, and uh, more on the programming later, we're having... Um, we're having like technical events to screen deals and to work on deals, but we're also trying to have a social event at least once a month that is fairly open to anybody who's interested to give our community face time and uh, time to network. So we just had a, a wonderful event at UNM last night with 70 people there, wine, snacks. It was uh, not only informative and useful, but I hope it was fun to actually to, to be there. So that's kind of the the flavor we're looking to uh, cultivate. So uh, a little bit about our process. We evaluate deals on a rolling monthly basis. We have a screening committee. Um, our uh, application is on our website. Uh, we use a, a system called GUST um, that uh, similar angel clubs use. Uh, there's an application on there that you can fill out, give us your financials, give us your, uh, the bio of your team. And then we have a screening committee that will evaluate those uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, we try to get feedback to everybody who applies. Uh, so um, what, you know, whether or not we're moving the deal forward, we'll try to get you some feedback from one of the actual investors who is looking at the deal. Um, there are, in addition to uh, actual investment, there's other ways to get involved. So uh, if our members have expertise um, or connections, uh, we try to uh, get them involved with a company that's coming on and applying uh, to move the move your uh, move your deal forward in some way, whether or not that is financial. We want to uh, collectively, uh, as a village, uh, raise the proverbial child here. So mm -hmm. it takes more than just investment capital. Sometimes it takes critical connect a critical connection, a mentor, uh, you know, a bridge to some other community resource. So we're trying to. Um, lean on our membership for those purposes, as well as just investment. Um, a little bit of uh, terminology, uh, an SPV, a special purpose vehicle, is often what we use to make an investment. So uh, if your round is you know, $300,000, it's easier to get 30 people to write 
$10,000 checks and one person to write a $300,000 check. So we'll spin up a uh, LLC for that purpose uh, and uh, collectively invest uh, as an organization um, through that vehicle. And um, one note on due diligence. So uh, after the screening committee I, I mentioned, we'll evaluate the application. If we have a, a quorum of interest amongst our membership that are interested in taking the deal forward, making an LLC, doing the, doing the deal, we'll do a, a deep dive and uh, a few due diligence sessions to collect further information on the company uh, and um, decide what we need to do to uh, make the investment. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a, a, we're forming a large community, including sponsorship, which uh, we couldn't do this without. So we've got many uh, wonderful community partners and sponsors that are um, working with us on programming, on um, events, et cetera, not least uh, of which is 110 Capital, uh, who we're very lucky to have on our side as a sponsor and a community partner. Um, more partners. The slide is broken. You get to reload. We found out that works. Oh, really? More sponsors and community partners. We have many of them. We're very grateful to all of them for uh, being on board for the ride with us. Now, here's some technical terminology. And uh, in the interest of transparency, I'm not a professional finance person, um, although I am interested in becoming one. But Dorian is. And she can, would you like to speak on the maybe the more nitty gritty aspects of what we do here? We'll put my mask back on. Yes. Yeah. So, um, can you see me? Yeah. Okay. So I already introduced myself. Um, but yeah, I, I have a long background in in finance in New Mexico. I'm an accidental venture capitalist. Um, so I had I started out as a water tech entrepreneur um, out of UNM and got some angel financing and then started hanging out with angel investors, which turned into an angel job and eventually turned into a VC. So. Um, I'm here accidentally, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've also worked for Village Capital, which is an international VC. Um, my husband and I own a radiant heat company and a construction company also. Um, and we have a five-year-old and a one-year-old. So I'm constantly tired. <laughs> but so, um, you so know. We're, we're very lucky to have you here. Yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm missing my daily nap. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, you know, you guys being Sandians, you understand you guys have all of your initials and your abbreviations and uh, terminology. So there's a couple terminology um, points that uh, I always like to review. So when we talk about, uh, you know, I'm gonna break it already. There we go. Um, so when you talk to, when you first talk to angel investors or VC investors, any type of professional finance person, they're gonna ask you what stage you're at. So pre-seed is typically, I have an idea, um, but it's kind of just an idea on paper. Um, seed is usually we have, you know, version 1.0 and we're getting ready to go to market or maybe early stages of market and series A is really that growth kind of round. Um, and then in terms of financing, you know, there's, uh, they may ask you um, your stage based on uh, how much financing you've raised. So um, that could be the, the FFF, the friends, family um, and others. Um, but, you know, there's there are different forms of financing. There's equity, there's debt, and then there's convertible notes, which are a, a combination of the two. And if you guys have any questions, please just chime in. And um, and I, I, that's also something I can share with you afterwards or uh, sample term sheets if that's something you guys are interested in seeing. And so valuation, we're not going to talk about too much today, but that's a very big conversation. Um, you know, that's how much is your company worth today? So, you know, we've all seen Shark Tank. How much of the company do I get, you know, based on the valuation of your company? Um, it's definitely more of an art than a science. I wish I could say that there's one simple equation you use, but, you know, based on the market, the opportunity, um, for me, it's a lot based on the team. So when I review deals, I look at uh, the team, the market, the technology, uh, the deal terms, and the team again. That's how strongly weighted the team is for me. And so is it a price round? Um, and then Max talked about SPVs. So what's an angel investor? Um, again, Max touched on this, but for, um, for the, the, the purposes of today, an angel investor is an accredited investor. So it's SE, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission. So it's a, it's a definition based on the tax code and it's how much you, based on how much you make a year, which the current code is $300,000. Um, if it's more, if you're married, 
And then you have to have, um, I believe it just went down to a million dollars um, for assets, not including your home. And so that's an accredited investor. Um, and that's important for you guys to know as you approach people, because there are rules about how you can approach investors. Um, you know, like if you like for your guys' deal, you can't just go post on the internet, hey, we're seeking all investors. You have to look at their accreditation before you can just put it out to the public. So one of the things about angels is, although angels and VCs are different, they are looking for the same kind of returns. So that's typically, uh, you know, um, 10X in five years. That's the goal. Obviously that doesn't always happen, but that's, that's the type of goal they're looking for. Um, for most investors, um, most angel groups, the New Mexico angels might be a little different. It's typically about a 20% ownership stake that they're looking for based on the level of financing you're raising. And so angels are usually doing a number of investments. Um, like if someone's a member of the New Mexico angels, a typical angels making three to five investments. Sometimes it's five to $10,000 each, but they want to diversify that portfolio to spread their risk. So a typical angel deal for New Mexico is a seed stage deal. So that's an early stage deal. Again, we're past the idea stage, but we're to a, a proof of concept version 1.0. With a pre-money valuation of lower than $5 million, again, if you're raising $350,000 and you have a pre-money valuation of you know, $25 million, the math just doesn't work for me to get involved. It just doesn't. The percentage of my ownership is so small that it's just not, not worth it. Again, you've seen those, those deals on Shark Tank where they kind of balk on the outset of why the valuation is so high. So something to keep in mind. Again, it's about 20%. Um, but the bonus of angels and a lot of early stage investors like myself is we try to bring more to the table than just capital. So we want to bring those, that advice, that expertise, those connections. So how do we get you, if you're into manufacturing, how do we get you into that manufacturer? Maybe you've never negotiated a manufacturing deal before. I have investors that have. And so we, we try to help as much as we can, even just on the back end for some of my companies, they've never run a board meeting before. This is how a board meeting is run, you know, and, and we walk through the processes. So it's, it's, we're helping them build the company alongside them. So we become a team. And that's something important to remember about investors is we're not a bank. You know, you don't take the money and run. We are actually a part of your team. And so it's a, it's a terrible statistic, but entertaining at the same time. Um, so there's a book called Venture Deals by Brad Fells. I encourage anyone who's looking for money to read that. Um, it's a good one. And in that, um, so you might've read this, that the, and it's actually longer now, but the average venture deal lasts longer than the average marriage. And so it used to be seven years and now it's nine. And so, <laughs> so just, just keep that in mind, you know, as investors, we're going to do our research on your company, but it's important that you do your research on the investors because we're with you for the long haul. And that's, that's important to remember too, is you can't always buy an investor out as investors. We have the right to be bought out when we choose. So we can, you can say, I'm buying out all my investors. The investors have the right to say no. So something to keep in mind of, you know, how long do you want to put up with these people essentially? So make sure it's a good team member. And for, um, for angels and VCs, typically we're not looking for, uh, we're looking for the big exit return. That's how we make it. We don't, we're not looking for dividends. We're not looking for little payments here and there. There are lots of structures in between that do that. You, you know, you can do a convertible note, there's um, revenue-based financing, which is a really interesting opportunity these days. But for the most part, people are looking for it on acquisition. A lot of early stage investors don't get bought out by, you know, like if you guys were to sell to Intel or something. That would be great, but usually we're not around by that time. We usually get bought out by the next VC who comes in. And that's definitely how that works. So what angels are looking for um, are barriers to entry. You know, what's your secret sauce? Can, can somebody do it tomorrow? Um, a lot of times, like for me, it's patents. Um, I like portfolios of IP. It just, you know, kind of helps me hedge my bets. Um, again, a solid management team. And the reason I talk about teams so much is, you know, just think about it. I mean, you guys have worked with teams your whole career. A good team can save a bad technology, can reinvent, can recreate, but a bad team is just going to take it. And so, you know, every deal I've ever seen go bad went bad because of the team, not because of the technology and its challenges. So we, we always look for that. Um, is, is it scalable? So, you know, we want to see that, that really stereotypical hockey curve, you know, the hockey stick. We want to see, you know, if we put money in, that's going to launch you to the next level. 
again, the desire for advice and coaching. Um, what can I help you with? You know, are you willing to, in a board meeting, take some advice? Um, you know, if you're not, we may not be the right partners. And then again, the 10X return. Any questions so far? No. So a couple things I always recommend. Um, there's a lot of angel groups in the United States. I think we're upwards of 190 now. Um, so the great part about what the New Mexico Angels do is they use the platform called Gust. Gust is awesome because most every angel group in America uses it. So you essentially fill out the application. There are a few idiosyncrasies that different groups may have, but for the most part, you're gonna if you fill it out once, you're gonna have it for everybody. And then you can just use that pre-canned one to apply to all the other groups, which is great. But that said, if you can get a referral in two groups, um, I've been in this uh, angel industry for uh, 12, 13 years now. If there's a group you guys are looking at, chances are I probably know them. So ask me, I'm, I'm happy to connect you in. This is a great first step into getting connected in, but it always just, you know, just basic salesmanship. It always helps to have a warm lead. Make sure you're a fit for that group. Um, even Max can tell you, you know, we can go into the Angels Gus profile today and kick out 50 applications because they're in Indonesia, they're in New York, they're, you know, asking for $10 million. Just look at the basics on there. You know, they'll tell you how much, you know, how much they invest and in, um, what they're looking for. Some groups are just for female entrepreneurs. Some are just for, um, just for bioscience, just for, um, you know, New Mexico is a little bit regional, um, but primarily New Mexico. And so everybody has their own um, requests. So just be sure to check that out. Um, and then they have their own requirements for, um, there's an application, but then most groups have some sort of presentation. So like the angels um, have a presentation quarterly of investors or of, um, entrepreneurs looking for investment, but the desert angels do it monthly. And like for the desert angels, you get 12 minutes. Um, for the New Mexico angels, you may only get five. And so just looking at how that prepares. So just, you know, the desert angels are in Tucson. Great group. And send your most current materials, your most current financials, because especially being in tech, things do change rapidly. Um, the don'ts are pretty simple. Uh, just don't assume that your deal will be funded. We all think our baby is beautiful. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's just not a fit. Sometimes for people like me, um, you know, I'm nearing the end of fund one. I just may be out of money. Um, and so, you know, just uh, and also don't assume it's worth what your friends and family tell you it is. Everybody thinks it's a billion dollar idea to which my response is always have them write you a check. Um, so just, you know, um, take it all with a grain of salt um, and just just be open. But um, I don't necessarily agree with the unsolicited info. Sometimes that's how we get leads. It's in Mexico, it's small. I'm actually okay with that one, but don't give up. Um, you know, and the other part is, uh, you know, most of us investors talk to each other. So just don't posture too much where I get it a lot. Well, I talked to so-and-so and they're gonna invest in me in one call and I can say that, you know. So just, just keep in mind, New Mexico's small. So a couple of myths about angel investors. Um, we don't fund ideas on paper. Uh, we don't pay high paying executive salaries. And what that means is we're not gonna pay Silicon Valley CEO prices, you know. Um, I'm not gonna pay $400,000 for a CEO in New Mexico. We pay what the market can bear. Make sure you can feed and water your kids. But um, we just, we, we keep it within means. Um, it says angels don't need to see a business plan. Nobody really does business plans anymore, but it's more of a strategic um, or growth plan I like to see. But what I want to see is just that you've thought about what happens in three, six, nine, 12 months, you know, and what happened, I want to, like for me, it's not on here, but for me, what I want to see is, okay, if I put money in today, your bank account goes up but I want to see how it trails down. So, you know, because most companies I see are pre-revenue. So what milestones can you hit along the way? So it's called the burn down chart, but I like to see burn down charts personally, because that tells me how long the investment's going to last. Um, angels don't care about return on their investment. It's not charity. <laughs> we definitely care. Um, but more than that, you know, we're, we're New Mexicans and, you know, we want to see job creation in our state. We want to see technologies come out. Um, super psyched that you guys are from Sandia. I, I was an angel in residence at Sandia for a long time. And, you know, that was my sole goal was how can we get these awesome minds 
to leave their very comfortable jobs it's and so take a risk on entrepreneurship. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah. And so, yeah, but I mean, and that's, and that's part of it. You know, we're like Max said, we're building a community and we just, you know, so we're in it for more than just the check. So some trends nationally, um, keeping in mind, New Mexico is a little bit lower. So um, the average pre-money uh, valuation for a company right now is about $4 million um, for a seed stage company. So again, that's the version one. And that's usually about $250,000 per angel group. Again, if you were to come to a small VC like me, um, my typical check size is about $500,000. I'm an early stage VC. So um, usually within about a, six to 12 months of my investment, bigger VCs come in. Um, and again, breaking that down to uh, the angel side, usually about $10,000 an investor, again, understanding they wanna diversify their portfolios. Typically, um, so this is a little bit different than New Mexico. So there are the convertible notes and the preferred stock. Um, New Mexico leans more towards the preferred stock in, um, that's the most popular here. Convertible notes are also common, um, just not as much so. Couldn't tell you why, but what a convertible note is, um, if you're not familiar, it's basically debt. So it's saying, you know, I, I'm gonna invest $500,000 in you today as debt, but in two years, when it expires, that debt converts to equity because we don't have enough information to put a valuation on it yet. So that's the reason you, if you don't have a valuation, we're just saying we're essentially kicking the can down the road. But it does give an out for the entrepreneurs because at that two years, you can say, you know what? We made it far enough. We're good. Maybe this isn't the right partnership or, you know, we just don't think we need it. You can pay that note off plus the interest and then not have to convert it to equity. Also an option. And there are safe notes out there. I'm sure you've heard of them. Um, more popular in Silicon Valley. I, I've seen two here. Don't worry. So this is a, a great chart that uh, Mr. Tom Stevenson from Verge made many years ago, but still holds true. Um, so it's as your um, as the return uh, decreases, your this is the decreasing return, decreasing risk, and it shows you the companies by uh, by stage. So what's interesting now is, you know, angels typically came in at business plan and prototype. We are seeing venture capital move a little bit earlier these days. And I think it's just because uh, the IPO market's nuts. Um, you wanna to talk to this one, Max? Sure, yeah. So I mentioned this earlier. Um, just some exciting figures here. Um, uh, so President Drew Tolchin's been at the helm for about a year now. He's got you know aggressive ideas about reaching out into the community, building our base of support, but also bumping our numbers and how much money we're putting into companies in the state. So um, this is uh, total total investment over the last decade or so. We've been averaging about a million five a year uh, for the last ten years, but already uh, this year. We're going to close strong, but I think we're you know over four million for the year, so we're you know three three x four x what we've been averaging, um, and looking to increase that in the future. So to be clear, so the the it's not quite four x; it, it was caused to invest. So the actual angel number is smaller than that. I can give you the numbers if you're interested. Yes, um, and so an interesting point though is you know uh, if you look at the jump between 2010 and 2011. Um, I mean, it's a significant jump. What happened was we had an exit and you would think that everybody just went out and bought Teslas or Ferraris or whatever. Um, uh, but what actually happened was everybody reinvested. So everybody took all of their, their profit and just put them back into more companies. Um, and then we had a drop in 2017 because uh, that's my fault. Um, I launched a venture fund and I siphoned some capital off. So sorry, everyone. I didn't know that. Well, we've invested in five companies. We've done $4 million. Now, now I know. <laughs> so, uh, so the process is um, the entrepreneur submits the information on Gust. Um, so that's usually your first step in. It's reviewed and vetted by uh, Max and his screening committees. And then um, if you're invited to, um, to go further with the screening committee, then you present to investors. And so, again, thinking of this giant funnel, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what the numbers are now, but when I was with the Angels, we were getting about 600 applications a year and funding for two to six companies a year. So, I mean, you're really, really whittling it down. 
And on the website, there's some bullet points on um, the application process, what to, what to expect, what to prepare, and there's a link to put, the, uh, put your application in. So um, many, many New Mexico success stories. Uh, you can go to the Angels and look at the portfolio they have up there um, or go to uh, my website is uh, 110.capital. And, um, but two um, that, that Drew and Max have spearheaded are, um, well, I, so I invested in, when I was still with the Angels, we invested in Meow Wolf. We were one of their early stage investors. Um, and again, that's, that's a, one, it's a good example of something that on paper did not look like it would fit. So we're looking for a tech company in New Mexico, um, you know, that can scale rapidly. This is a, you know, a, it's kind of, it's hardware, it's an experience, it's art. It looked like oil and water, you know, but our investors had interest. And so that one, that one went well for our investors. Um, we had an exit out of that uh, a few years ago. Uh, and that was another one where like bigger VC bought out earlier guys. And then this year, uh, um, the angels came in and uh, helped Taos Bakes on their growth path. And I've actually got some Taos Bakes uh, merch in the car. Maybe I'll bring that in if you guys, <laughs> if, if you guys eat all the cupcakes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we need to resupply. I've got Taos Bakes. Please eat the expensive cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of angels out there. Where can you find them? Um, the New Mexico Angels Rocky Ventures Club is in Denver. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's worth noting that if there are different levels of membership for the angels, there's an entrepreneurial membership. One of the benefits of, uh, becoming an, an investor member of the New Mexico angels is you're also an investor member of Rocky Ventures Club too, which is cool. Um, there's the angel capital association, and that will show you all the accredited angel organizations. And so it's important to note that you want to make sure it's not just like a club. It's actually an accredited group. So that's a wonderful place to look. Tech Coast Angels um, has been working with the New Mexico Angels. And I know Drew works really closely with Social Venture Circle, Investors of Color, and Swan. Um, something else to look at too, you know, again, this isn't my platform, but I'm gonna take it. Um, but so I'm, again, I'm a VC, I'm not an angel. Uh, I'm a personal angel, but I'm not a, um, a New Mexico angel. Um, but check out the Catalyst Funds. So um, there were early stage venture capital funds, um, like there's Tramway Ventures, there's us, there's Bluestone Ventures, Albuquerque ID, um, Arrowhead Network, and a couple others. But uh, anyway, so, but there, we're kind of bridging that gap. There was, there's been a gap in New Mexico where there's angels and then there's VCs. Typically you think of VCs, you think of like 1.5 million. Well, how do you get to that in-between spot if you're raising $300,000 or 200, 200 or $300,000 angels to 1.5? That's a big gap. And so that's where all of our early stage funds come in is to help bridge that gap. And the great part is, you know, you hear around New Mexico, there's no capital. There's actually a lot of capital available right now. And so, you know, just something to keep in mind. So yeah, I can, I can take this one. Um, as I mentioned, we're, you know, uh, on overdrive for uh, networking events. Um, some upcoming things uh, with our partners, uh, Rockies Venture Club is having an invest uh, investing deep dive next week. This is hybrid online and in person. I'm going to be in Denver for this one. So if you want to see me uh, on the screen again, I, uh, uh, I'll be there. Um, later this month, Women's, Women's Investor Network has a couple of um, in-person and hybrid kind of networking opportunities. So for the uh, women in, uh, entrepreneurs in the room and online, uh, this is something that we highly recommend to get involved in. There's a lot of great peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities there. Um, Next Friday, we have our New Mexico startup office hours. We do this in partnership with CNN in Albuquerque, the uh, Ingenuity Fund. And this is a uh, this is a fairly informal and kind of like loosey goosey networking uh, uh, exercise. But we have breakout rooms. So New Mexico Angels has a breakout room. We'll have various other VCs and community partners that will breakout rooms, and we'll empower you guys to uh, pick which subjects you want to engage which people you wanna learn from. And um, we're also starting to feature entrepreneurs uh, as speakers during office hours. So this is something that you know, we highly recommend checking out. Um, if you are interested in, well, you know, anything angels related or uh, you know, entrepreneur related in general. Um, in addition to these events, uh, we have uh, 
this this is our kind of regular monthly programming office hours i just talked through that that's um third friday of the month as it says right there uh screening committee meetings are once a month it's the third tuesday um tutor tuesdays is a program that we have a we'll have a guest speaker usually somebody nationally uh who has some experience in um in bc in uh growing companies and uh that's online lunch hour uh and they'll give a give us a, uh, give a talk and we'll have an opportunity for q a in addition to this we've got uh monthly social events like i mentioned uh and once a quarter we'll do a big blowout to uh um kind of brag about how well we've done but also highlight some of the companies that uh are making it through our diligence process give them a chance to pitch meet the public and uh, and all of that so our quarterly is scheduled for january 27th i believe uh venue is tbd though so keep an eye on nmangels.com slash events uh and we'll make an announcement there as soon as we have a venue locked in for that and then i'd be re remiss if i didn't mention again new angel club starts january 12th that's online um so if anybody is interested in becoming an angel doesn't know where to start we can show you where to where to begin um recommended reading uh i'm slowly making my way through this list myself on my on my path to becoming an angel investor um let's see dorian do you remember brad feld is he or the rbc guy uh, so um, no brad feld is just a, um, a big bc advocate okay um these are these are recommended books um i am starting to put these on my shelf any of these that you've read dorian you can oh. recommend all of them do you have a favorite <laughs> It depends on what you're looking for. Okay. But no, Venture Capital for Dummies is pretty good. Is it? Um, oh, this is the one. This yeah, is, yeah. This so, is the so, artist. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Peter Adams is uh, the president of the Rockets Venture Club in Denver, and so he wrote it. Um, but it's it's a good, I, I, I mean, you can't read it like a novel. It's more of like a, a resource guide, but it's helpful. Um, yeah. But especially Venture Deals um, is a great place to, I mean, you guys have read it, um, but to look for, if you're looking for term sheets in this And uh, of course, big thank you to Fat Pipe for hosting. Um, we could not do any of what we do without community resources like this, places to get together to work out these ideas and get them to the point where they're ready for the next step. And I think that's it for us. Uh, we're looking forward to being in touch. Please come to office hours, come to the social events. We want to see you. Um...